Hey guys, welcome back. I've um, got a new, another new video for you today. Um, it's called the Dynamic Duo. Um, it's going to be about the, the early years of uh, Cadillac Frank Salemi and Stevie the Rifleman Fleming. And, you know, some of the, the notorious hits that, that made them who they are and, and really, you know, the earlier years. These guys did a lot of work together. They, they did work for Raymond Patriarca Sr. They did, uh, they did work for Wimpy Bennett. That's actually who they came up under. Um, you know, and, and when these two, who, who initially kind of, you know, sat out the Irish gang war of the 60s, you know, um, by the time they get involved, you know, it gets nasty, and we're going to get into that in a second. Um, so, Punchy McLaughlin, one of, one of the uh, three McLaughlin brothers who are in a bitter, nasty, you know, ruthless war um, in the 1960s, uh, Winter Hill, um, which is Somerville, and uh, the Charlestown Mob, which is the McLaughlins. So, you know, obviously, last week we touched on the, the first murder with uh, Buddy McLean, who, uh, when he put down Bernie McLaughlin in, in Charlestown outside the bar. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the second brother, uh, Punchy McLaughlin, who on November 23rd, 1964, at approximately 11 a.m., was pulling up to Beth Israel Hospital parking lot in Brookline. Um, and there, you know, what he was doing there was, was essentially you know, raising money for the war, for their side of the war, and, you know, to be able to take care of, you know, whatever they need to take care of. They're kind of on the run at this point a little bit, um, you know, and, and things just get worse, you know, for them from here. And uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that one. So Cadillac Frank um, Salemi and Steve Flemmy both came up under Wimpy Bennett, who was an Irish mobster from Roxbury, Mass., um, a very interesting guy, very Machiavellian, um, gave these two their start, obviously. Um, so Punch McLaughlin was there to meet an associate of his, Wimpy Bennett, uh, Earl Smith, I believe his name was. And so he's meeting there at the Beth Israel Hospital in Brookline, Mass. Um, and he's sitting there in the car waiting to meet this guy when a car with Rhode Island plates slowly pulls up and out jumps two Hasidic rabbis dressed in the full garb, the, you know, the whole thing, like the, you know, Sopranos, that, yeah. And, uh, so, I mean, he doesn't see them. They come walking up. He has his window down in his car. It's idling. So one of the rabbis reaches in with the sawed-off 12, 12 gauge shotgun and boom, boom. He hits him twice in his jaw, McLaugh punches McLaughlin. And, you know, obliterates this guy's face to, you know, right point-blank range, sawed-off shotgun, you can imagine. Um, you can Google that, actually, you know, if it's too graphic for YouTube, but if you go on Google and type in Punchy McLaughlin, uh, shot in jaw, shot in face, you'll see what we're talking about here, and it, it's, it's brutal. And then the other rabbi, simultaneously on the other side of the car, fired into the car with a 357 Magnum, I believe, hitting him somewhere in the chest region. He ends up living. He survives this hit. You know, look, I'm sure it helped that he was outside of a hospital, you know, or close to it. Um, but, you know, I remember when I first read that, hearing about this particular incident, I was just like, well, you know, you can really kind of imagine, you know, the way it's, uh, you know, how it's described, the hit. He ends up surviving. He survives that hit, um, you know, and then, you know, they start getting desperate. They start trying to knock this guy off any way they can. Um, you know, Stevie Flemmy, his, his nickname is The Rifleman. You know, he's uh, a veteran himself, you know, fought in Korea, um, you know, and who knows if he killed more people over in Korea or he killed people, more people on the streets of Boston. Who, who really knows? That guy is... Very interesting guy. If he wasn't such a weasel, I mean, God, whoa. Interesting guy. So anyways, right? So you don't get a name like the Rifleman from not being able to, you know. And uh, so they get info from, my opinion, the most corrupt FBI agent of all time, H. Paul Rico, who makes John Conley look like an altar boy. Um, he essentially was above John Conley, kind of brought him back into the fold in Boston. 
So there was report there with them, you know, and this guy was so nasty, he was so dirty, this FBI agent, Rico. He would go, and after they bungled that hit, he would go to Flemmy and Salemi, because this is when the witness protection program first started. They're trying to, you know, Barboza, right? Um, Joe, Joe Barboza. He, uh, he's actually the first person to enter the, the witness protection program. Prior to him, this is, this is what they were trying to do. So that's why they were correlating with an FBI agent, one who was extremely dirty like him, who he's, he's essentially rubbing it in their faces. He's coming up to him, bringing bags of carrots to the Winter Hill uh, Clubhouse and, and elsewhere to the Dearborn Square Gang in Roxbury. You know, in other words, you know, so you can see better and, and shoot better. Um, you know, stuff like that or whoever, whoever was on that piece of work was an awful, dirty, nasty piece of work. Just a dirty, dirty... This is an FBI agent, mind you. You know what I mean? And, you know, you're looking at the criminals, essentially, as, you know, like, you're looking at him, you're looking at them, you're like, uh, you know, and these were some serious guys that he was around, and he was a dirtball, what a, you know. So anyways, he gives them some information. They set up on this perch. Um, I believe the shooter in this one was Stevie Flemmy, I'm pretty sure. And he, he angles up on a tree. They know, they know where Punchy McLaughlin, and, and uh, I believe he was with someone else. He's coming, he's coming from some meeting or whatever. He's coming down on this street where Stevie Flemmy's perched up in a tree with a carbine. And, uh, you know, as soon as he comes, you know, comes in close, Wimpy Bennett in a crash car comes, pulls ahead of the McLaughlin's car and punches it. So that's, that was the, you know, that's to mock that car as, you know, this car hit this car. So as soon as he, you know, cut them off essentially and, and pulled forward, Flemmy starts opening it up with the carbine from the tree. He fucking obliterates his hand on the first one. One of the ones holding the steering wheel. So now this guy, this poor guy, by the time they did him in, he was, you know, begging for it. This guy's missing half his jaw. He was in the hospital for like, you know, X amount of months. You know, a few months later, the second attempt, you know, Flemmy with the carbine in the tree. And he obliterates one of his hands. One of his hands doesn't kill him again. Right? Guy gets lucky, ducks down, he's driving. And, uh, you know... Obliterate. I think he lost like three fingers or something like that. It was, uh, you know, really brutal. And um, but he survives that one, right? You know, he's like a the cat with nine lives. And uh, you know, so the the third and final attempt, which I'm coming to now, is they end up tracking him a, a few months after the second attempt. Uh, this is Cadillac Frank and and Stevie Flemmy and and Raymond Senior, who who really adored. Cadillac Frank Salemi Flemmy as well wanted to make them both um you know so he's pushing for this thing to end you know whack this guy out he, he, you know we need this war to be over so we can get back to business and, and get back to earning this is stupid you know no one's winning this thing take care of it so they do they track this guy down to uh Punchy McLaughlin to a West Roxbury bus stop you know you can imagine this guy's probably looking around like you know, he's got his 38 and his little, uh, you know, lunch bag or whatever. And he's looking around, you know. And as he's going to get on the bus in West Roxbury, Stevie Flemmy comes out, you know, from behind the bus stop. He's got a, uh, I want to say he's got a 38 long barrel. And he's got the paper bag over it, hiding it. So he walked up on the bus, calmly came in the back of Punchy McLaughlin's head, aimed it up and... <laughs> You know, and uh, so when did Punchy McLaughlin? Um, and, you know, a little funny thing about that, too, is, like, I guess after he puts down McLaughlin, who pretty much almost died instantly, third and final attempt, he, uh, I guess a few bystanders had popped up and, you know, probably wanted to go, you know, play hero or whatnot. And it said, you know, Flemmy just turned around nonchalantly and kind of just gave a slight wave of the gun, like, no, 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 no. Which they calmly sat back down. Flemmy proceeded to go meet back up with Cadillac Frank. They punched out of there, and uh, the last, the last of the McLaughlins was was done in. Um, you know, and from the rest of the war on, you know, it was really um, all the allies of the McLaughlins. They were either Georgie McLaughlin doing life in prison, or Bernie and Punchy who were shot down on the streets going against Winter Hill. Um, 
But yeah, just a quick short video today. I wanted to touch on some things. You know, I, I find these two very interesting, especially Cadillac, Frank, Salemi. Um, Flemmy kind of gives me the creeps a little bit. But thank you guys for tuning in. Um, stay tuned for my next video. Should be coming in the next few days or so. Um, I look forward to dropping more content. And uh, please, if, if you're watching this video and you like, like, comment, subscribe, share, and uh, stay tuned. We've got a lot of stuff we're going to do with the channel. So thank you guys. Have a good day.